ការប្រាំងជានយោបាយទីសោនយោជិតនៃក្រុមហ៊ុនអ៊ីស៊ីខំក្នុងនាមជាក្រុមហ៊ុនផ្ដល់សេវាកម្មភាតនានំដាប
uh, Ms. Uh, Director Sokta to help start our day today. Director Sokta, please. Jumipso, good morning, uh, good afternoon, probably uh, good night to Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. As, uh, as I am one of the uh, organizing committee, I first of all would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, who are present here and welcome to the second day of Cambodian e-learning forum 2020. Despite the, quite, the critical and challenging situation of COVID-19, this is an auspicious occasion and a great momentum for us. And I am most honestly proud as CF 2020 could take place here, which is the first uh, e-learning forum that bring all together, all policy maker, expert, practitioner, teacher, of course, student in one place to share the best practices, e-learning trends and prospects, and to discuss the emerging technology that can contribute to the advancement of uh, e-learning in Cambodia and in the globe. Currently, uh, COVID-19 is having a significant impact on us in many ways, and among that education is remarkably uh, seen to the shift dramatically, which we usually say that challenging challenge is an opportunity. It allows all of us to join together, seeking the effective approach to deliver education for our children, to ensure that learning still continues amid the difficult time. And that and that's what e-learning e and distance education are the solution and playing a very critical, significant role at the moment and, will, and still continue in the future under the new normal. Ladies and gentlemen, digital education while e-learning is one in that aspect was not just encourage our student, our education, our education system when we face in this challenge. According to the insightful vision of Excellency Dr. Hong Chun Nguyen, Minister of Education, Youth and Sport Cambodia, it was acknowledged and become one of the pillars in the education reform. And we have been strategically planning and implementing a wide variety of initiatives in many areas of intervention have been put to achieve this. Having listened to all distinguished speaker panelists uh, from yesterday, sharing very inspiring experience and perspective related to pedagogy in e-learning and digital content development, open uh, educational resources, you provide us with a uh, numerous idea and input that we can adopt and bring positive change to our education system in Cambodia. And of course, all of you, I believe, may also get a lot of, of how Cambo uh, Ministry of Education Cambodia is putting in the great effort in enhancing the digital education so the comprehensive presentation from 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 uh, uh, Dr. San Watana under 60 said yesterday. I could see how enthusiasm, enthusiastic of every speaker and presenter uh, have been put uh, have been present here in this video forum, and. I really, really appreciate it. Honestly, without celebrating this event, I would not have known that e-learning Cambodia have been an amazing growing in such, in such uh, until the meeting met up with all you yesterday from various organizations, but just of course, 
individually. COVID-19, it really challenging us. Finally, we again, on behalf of the organizing committee, sincerely thank to every one of you for being with us here today, the second day, supporting us for this development effort. More importantly, this event really encouraged us to work closely together for the future of cooperation collective to collectively create and enable learning environment where e-learning will be one of the effective solutions to achieve the future education and to promote lifelong learning for all. I definitely wish that I would have an opportunity to work with you together to push the area of e-learning to a success. I hope you will have a fruitful and product productive discussion for today and allow me to open today's event. Let's enjoy this more webinar event and watch our live session together. So much fun and thank you very much. Director Sokta, uh, thank you so much for your insightful opening remarks. Uh, we are looking forward to the day today and we sincerely thank your department as well as the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport for the incredible role that you have played in supporting us in the organization of CEF 2020. And we hope that today will be as productive and interesting and engaging as yesterday. So uh, everyone, please have fun. Uh, we will be starting with our first speaker momentarily. Thank you so much, Director Sokka. Welcome to Everyone, uh, I hope you're ready. We are going to be starting now with our first speaker um, with Ms. Kate O'Connell from the Giving Tree School and she will be speaking on platforms and pedagogy, e-learning platforms that help move schools successfully online. This presentation will be in English. So please um, look forward to the first speaker of today. Thank you. អឺវិទ្យាការការសិក្សាតាមប្រព័ន្ធអនឡាញ <coughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning to Your Excellency, Han Chen Ran, and all other excellencies and participants who are joining us today from around Cambodia. Thank you to the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, the IDEA Consultancy, and IT Step Academy for organizing this event. I would like to welcome you to Platforms and Pedagogy, e-learning platforms that help schools move online successfully. Who am I? I'm Kate O'Connell, and I'm the head of the Giving Tree International School here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. I have 25 years of experience in education, including having worked in and consulted at 30 schools in 12 countries and on four continents. In my various roles, I have a wealth of experience with children ranging from ages 12 months to 12 years. I received both my bachelor's degree in elementary education and my master's degree in curriculum and instruction from Michigan State University. 
and soon I will have completed my Certificate of School Management and Leadership from Harvard Business School. My educational leadership philosophy is based on three key points, impact, collaboration, and innovation. I look forward to impacting education in Cambodia through CEF's innovative initiatives and collaborations. I am unapologetically passionate about children and education. Today, I will take you through the journey of the Giving Tree International School's move to online learning. At the Giving Tree International School, we are a low-tech but not no-tech school. Parents choose to send their kids to school because we are play-based and focused on the whole child. We create strong relationships and build child-centered, home-like environments for our students. So it was difficult for us to reproduce this concept online. During the first closure, many parents did not want their children to have any screen time. Furthermore, it was difficult for parents who still needed to be working. Many students stay with grandparents or nannies who are not familiar with online tools. So they did not return for term four in 2020. It was hard to sell online learning to parents and even harder to get young students focused for online learning. Since then, we have been reflecting on our practices and we have made improvements. There are a few things that we have done right that helped us to make this transition and to build back our student enrollments. And I will share those successes with you now. One of our keys to success is being curious. And another key to our success is using systems thinking to look at for out for leverage points, which comes with my experience working with Compass Education. Our tagline at TIS is hashtag passionately curious. And in our mission, we strive to nurture a collaborative community of inquirers. So we started by asking ourselves questions. How could we inquire into the best practices in online learning? What could we emulate? And what could we do better? What lessons could we glean from other schools? First, we looked to other IB schools in Vietnam, China, and Qatar through our educator networks. Many of those schools were the first to go online. We learned that both Seesaw and YouTube were a big part of the practices and were used for online learning in various schools. Early in March, we held a whole school meeting where teachers read examples of online learning from the My IB website, and collaboratively, we came up with a plan for online learning. At the Giving Tree International School, we are an IB, International Baccalaureate, primary years program school. We are concept-driven, inquiry-based, and transdisciplinary. We teach across and through the subject areas around transdisciplinary themes, like who we are, and where we are in time and place. We decided early on that we would not revert back to more traditional subject-based approach to learning. For example, doing a lot of worksheets. We use Zoom to connect with students and morning circle times checking in with our students. We use YouTube to create instructional videos and read-alouds. And everything that we planned was child-centered and child-focused. Teachers ask themselves questions while planning. Will they be able to do this easily at home? If not, what materials might they need? The teachers made learning packets to support the online learning so that students could access the curriculum at home. We discussed how we could leverage the platforms that we already had in use. Some of these included Zoom, YouTube, WhatsApp, Think Think, Learning A to Z, Moby Max, Google Classroom, Seesaw, and Mathletics. We set up a time for students to practice using the apps before the camp's closures. Students practiced logging in to read RazKids, Mathletics, and Moby Max so that they would be familiar with those apps while they were at home. Our goal was to make learning seamless using the apps that the kids use in school to help support their learning at home. Our apps completely cover the curriculum Learning A to Z provides literacy support for the units of inquiry, including social studies and science. Mathletics provides mathematics support for inquiry and inquiry-based projects, but it also allows for students to practice playing games, both alone and with others. Momimax offers a diagnostic tool 
so that we can use data to inform our teaching and learning and to ensure the students of TGTIS do not have gaps, any learning gaps in their learning. So with so many apps, we have offered parent support, both on campus and online. Furthermore, teachers have guided parents and caregivers how to set up purposeful learning centers at home to cater for and support our younger learners. These centers will then become areas for learning throughout with guidance of the support of teacher input. So what can you do? Well, one of the challenges to moving online is re resisting the temptation to use a more traditional method of learning such as lecturing. Having teachers only teach on Zoom for eight hours and to do worksheets is a request parents often make as they are working and the students need supervision all the time. Parents need their students to be occupied, which is why eight hours of Zoom and worksheets can be seen as a solution. However, we know that that is not the optimal practice for long-term learning. It just isn't how the brain works. When deciding on how you will run your online learning, make sure that it matches what you know about good teaching and learning. Students need to be engaged, interested, and have agency with their learning. So how are we continuing to live our values online? At TGTIS, we have six pillars that define who we are and what we do. The pillars each are represented by a colored section of our logo. One, we are a home. We make sure that students are seeing the same people online that they would see at school. Teachers and learning assistants host live sessions. Even our special specialists offer live online classes. We also have posts from other administration team members too. This reassures kids that we are still here for them, even though they aren't on campus with us. We are global citizens. We are maintaining our units of inquiry, which look at local and global issues. We are also continuing to develop our practice of offering additional languages in French and Khmer. World-class education through the IB. We are connected to hundreds of schools online and worldwide, many of whom are also learning online. And we share inspirational and innovative ideas. We have continued to maintain our high teaching standards, providing many materials for students to work at home in line with our approach to inquiry. We are green. Online apps support immediate feedback and data collection without paperwork. We have, as far as possible, not resorted to printing out endless worksheets, but have maintained our sustainability practices by encouraging students to use practical, recyclable, and reusable materials. Highest quality education for all. Teachers are continuing to plan the same learning engagements online as they do for on making adjustments where necessary and using award-winning apps and resources. Socially responsible. At TGTIS, we do this through the use of the IB Learner Profile. And for example, students need to use Netiquette while using Zoom and the other online platforms. And the teachers provide feedback on this to the students through Seesaw. Ongoing reflection. To understand the effectiveness of our programs and to measure our impact, we need to include all perspectives. Asking questions about how effective our programs are and how we will measure that impact has helped us to know where our leverage points are. Those leverage points that will help us make the most effective change to our learning system. We gathered feedback from teachers, parents, and students. This is an example of the results from a parent survey that we put out on Google Forms. We met with teachers in meetings, teachers made phone calls home to parents, and teachers asked their students for direct feedback. The feedback showed us that we were doing a good job, but the biggest pain point for us was that we were just not doing enough, especially with our specialist classes, as they have been conducted on YouTube. We found moving them to in live classes was a successful pivot. 
So what can you do? Well, I would suggest that you can continually reflect with all of your stakeholders by asking these two questions. Ask, how effective are our programs? And how are you going to measure your impact? You can send out surveys, make phone calls, and find other initiative, innovative ways to elicit feedback. At the Giving Tree International School, we strive for continual improvement. With technology continually evolving and changing, so much our online offerings. Just as tech companies troubleshoot to improve upon their products, at the Giving Tree, we feel it is equally important for us to improve our online learning tools and tasks, as well as our practices, to make sure our students have the optimal educational experience. We do this by asking ourselves three questions. What are our biggest pain points for teachers, parents, and students? What are the small things that we could do better that would make a big difference? And how can we serve our community more effectively? We made some pivots, and I'll talk about those pivots now. First, we pivoted with our apps. In addition to moving our specialists, from video lessons to live lessons, we also have taken on a new comprehensive app called Tuttle that has all the features of Seesaw, plus the student information system, and IBPYP planning, curriculum mapping, as well as professional development on the IBPYP and support. Furthermore, we have added reading eggs for our younger learners to our literacy suite. Next, we made changes to our schedule. We created a schedule that reflected a more seamless transition from in-class learning to online learning. So what can you do? Ask yourself, what are the biggest pain points you are experiencing? It can be hard to face this head on, and it can be easier just to keep doing what you've been doing. I wanna inspire you today with our example of what is possible and how we pivoted to improve upon what we're doing, even when we were doing it well. So in summary, the top three takeaways I would like you to have as a result of my presentation are, one, stay true to who you are, create an impact by aligning your practice with effective on-campus practice. Two, use ongoing reflection. Use collaborative reflection with students, parents, and teachers to inquire into how effective is our teaching and learning? What is the one thing we can improve upon? And strive for continual improvement. Face your realities and look for ways to effective on campus practice. Thank you for listening. Use our journey of it. I wish I was reading the students at the International School. Thank you to IT Staff Academy and the IDS Consultancy for this opportunity. No, that's what I wanted to do. Collaborating, innovating, and making an impact on education in Cambodia. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us today. So, great to see you, Kaylee. Hi. How, good morning. Uh, I hope you've had a great morning. So, um, so, just for the audience, we have just finished up with Kate's presentation. So, here we are, Kate, live and ready to answer all of your questions. She is from The Giving Tree, so please direct your questions towards the stage chat. And um, so we do have a, are you ready to start, Kate? Absolutely. All right, so we do have a couple of questions coming in just now. Um, so we will have 15 minutes for this Q&A session. So please do answer <clears throat> along. All right, so the first question, is from um, how to ensure that students stay focused and engaged and not distracted with games and chat during class. 
I think that's a great question and one that requires parental support. Um, I think the most effective thing you can do is to create essential agreements around how children are going to behave online. And during these times when we are on campus, to practice those while you're in person. And I think having people respond um, in certain ways, like don't let something go when it's happening. You need to stop it. So if you're teaching on Zoom or Google Meets and you've got a chat going, you have to stop teaching and, and address the, the chat issue right then and there. So it's just like being in a classroom when you're sitting with kids in front of you and two kids are messing around, you, you have to stop what you're doing and address it and teach them. These are good examples of what it looks like to participate. And these are what are non-examples and then have the students um, end with the good examples. A terrific answer. Um, yes. Please, uh, Ms. Kate has been an expert on student and child rearing, so please do take these notes. Okay, so second question would be, um, as an IB school, I understand, we understand that the assessment process is different from traditional schooling. So how do you, as an IB school, conduct student assessments? Uh, there are lots of ways that you can conduct student assessments. Uh, formative assessments and summative assessments. And the research shows that formative assessment is more impactful on learning. So giving feedback is one of the most effective things you can do um, for your students. Re kids are gonna learn regardless of whether their learning is reported on. So you need to put the reporting system, the reporting communication system into perspective. What's important is student learning, like our students learning. So I think if you focus on the formative feedback and learning is progressing, then you can, um, uh, yeah, report on the learning. I'm not sure I answered that question. So if that person um, wants to ask a follow-up question, please go ahead. We, it is true. We do not have traditional assessments and we are able to use um, learning portfolios and one of the amazing things about the newest app that we've um, picked up at the Giving Tree, Toddle, is that our report cards will have embedded evidence. So when parents are seeing the report card that we've made, um, then it can, it'll say your child can um, read with fluency. And then there might be a link to a video where the child is reading a book at his or her level fluently. So I think collecting evidence on learning is another significant way to report on learning. App that other people should get on board on. <laughs> um, following up on that, can you please clarify, clarify um, what you mean by a formative assessment? Formative? Formative is in time. In, we don't have to wait to assess kids. We can pre-assess them before we even start. So. In the IB, we look backwards by design. So that's like mapping out where we want the kids to go in the end. So for us, it's we want them to understand the central idea of the unit. And so all of our activities are building toward that central idea. So in the beginning, in the first time you're doing the unit, you would do a provocation and you would uncover what students already know about that topic or that unit or that central idea? What do they know? Because students don't come to us without information. They have their own ideas, conceptions, misconceptions uh, about things. So, so how can we provoke their thinking and uncover what they already know so we can know where to take them? So formative, to go back to the original question, is assessing them in time and providing feedback. Okay. And in the topic of assessment, how can you measure another question from Ms. Insukia um, is how can you measure unquantifiable elements like behavior changes in students? Uh, that's a really good question. And I think that the, this is um, a topic of controversy, in, especially in the IB world, because we focus on the learner profile, which are students being thinkers, inquirers, principled, and those are really hard things to measure. Um, I think that's something we need more research on, um, because if it's unquantifiable, how do we measure it? I think what 
the answer that I would give off the cuff is that you'd collect evidence, you know, and put what a child was like, what their behaviors were like in the beginning. And then after a year with you, what are their behaviors like in the end and what happened in the middle? So collecting evidence could be one way that you could document that process of change. So evidence is very important in any kind of assessment situation. Yeah. Um, it seems that there is a lot of interest in student assessment here. So I will be continuing on this um, question. Um, I love assessment. Bring it on. <laughs> so uh, more on measuring through an e-learning platform. Um, so you mentioned also already Toddle and collecting evidence. Um, but how about um, creating an effective formative assessment? Like what is the what should you provide earlier before the lesson goes or after the lesson is gone? This is a question from Surung Sreihe. And they would like to know how to create a formative assessment. So formative assessment goes into your thinking. So it's what are you going to do with the kids that's going to provoke their thinking to give you the information that they want? So, for example, if you were um, teaching a unit, say, on the solar system, right, and many students would have, like, a misconception about what the moon is made of, you might have um, a discussion at the beginning of the unit about what their beliefs are about, you know, about the solar system and how it works. So it could be an, a formative assessment can be just a discussion. It can be as simple as that. Taking note of what the kids are saying about the topic or the content. It can be something else too. Like for example, when I was teaching grade two, we were doing a unit on adaptation. Um, animals adapt to their environment in order to survive. And so each day my co-teacher and I, we took away something from the students um, and they had to figure out how to learn without it. Uh, one day we took away all the chairs and they had to adapt. One day we took away the air con and um, another day we took away the tables. And then we had conversations about how we had to adapt to that change in our environment. So provoking thinking is really important. So many teachers make the mistake, many educators everywhere make the mistake of thinking, what am I gonna have the students do? I want to change that. I want to ask you, I want to inspire you to ask, what am I going to ask that will get the students to think? How you promote their curiosity as well. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant segue, Kaylee. Brilliant. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. If we're raising and nurturing a collaborative community of inquirers, we have to be inquirers ourselves and we have to ask questions. The best way to get information about your students is to ask good questions. Mm. All right, thank you so much, Kate. Time for um, one more question or actually two, two okay. short questions. So um, the first is um, from Kang Putira. And they would like to know, uh, parents are concerned that students with much time online may develop unhealthy habits and symptoms of social anxiety. They may prefer to stick with devices and isolate themselves from social interaction. How is this addressed? How to assess social and emotional development? I think this is really important. And this is the conversation I just had with my teachers. Um, one of our um, qualities at the Giving Tree is that we're sincere. And I think it's really important. Um, in the presentation, I mentioned um, getting feedback from parents. I think we have to check in regularly with parents. How is it going? Teachers making phone calls home and talking to students personally. How is this going? Um, that's a concern I have for my own, my own children. And um, it is a big concern. And I think that's why um, in the presentation, I was talking about offering offline suggestions for learning as well for parents who might need to do something else other than have their children join Zoom. So what learning areas could you create in your house? Um, what uh, activities can you give them? We send home learning packets 
with activities that kids can do without online resources. We put YouTube videos up that they can access just when they want, 10 minutes. Um, I think for us as parents, I'm a parent, this is hard. Online school is hard. It is so hard. Motivated students are motivated and older students can do this. It is really hard for the young learners. We have learners as young as one years old. And if I'm completely honest, I would much rather have those young learners in school and on campus um, and not, not doing online learning because they need socialization. Is one of the challenges of conducting virtual classes because of the smaller students' play-based learning style. Okay, thank you so much, Kate. Um, we'll just tackle one last question and then um, we'll <clears throat> finish up with your session. So um, just to go back to the assessment, um, we've answered what kind of assessments can be done, but um, how exactly do you conduct it online as, uh, as a school, as teachers? What, how do you do that? Well, one of the tools that I suggested in my presentation is something that I think everyone should check out is MobyMax. MobyMax is a diagnostic tool that will give you information about your learners and it finds the gaps in their learning. So you get a report. And for example, in math, a child might be, you know, at a grade six level in geometry, but they may have missed something in another um strand of math, like, for example, area and volume. And uh, MobyMax will diagnose that and let you know that this child, while they're at a grade six level in geometry, they're at a grade three level in um, volume and area. And then it provides the practice that is needed to get them up to speed. And that way you can ensure that, because especially now with COVID-19, there are going to be learning gaps because we've stopped and started our learning. We've been on campus and online, and um, we don't know exactly um, what is, is, has gone on for students socially and emotionally, like the last question we asked. And we know that social and emotional, um, the state, the social and emotional state of the learner impacts their ability to learn and impacts the ability for long-term memory. So. I would highly suggest um, checking out that app and getting data on your learners so that you can have evidence-based um, information to make decisions on teaching and learning going forward. Thank you. So um, that is our last question for you today. Um, thank you. I'd like to thank uh, everyone for all of your great questions here. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed Kate's very honest and insightful answers. Kate, thank you so much for joining us for CEF 2020 this morning. You're welcome, it's my honor. Thank you for your time. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, please uh, stay online so that any other viewers can directly message you their questions and query chat. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, do you have any last uh, last insights to share with the audience before we end the call? Um, I'd just like to say that I think that this CEF forum is a very great um, new initiative and it's innovative. And I hope that we can continue moving forward and that some of us can meet and make a difference in the lives of students in Cambodia. Completely agree. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, will you be at the expo booths today? Yes. 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 Okay. So anyone who has any questions, Kate will be live in the expo section under the Giving Tree International School. So please do visit, visit their booth this morning when you would have the time and would like to do that. Okay. Thank you so much, Kate. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, uh, thank you so much, everyone. That was Kate from The Giving Tree. So up next, we have Amit from Microsoft, and he will be sharing with you how you can leverage the Microsoft 360 platform to collaborate, communicate, 
uh, and create in-person and online to create a teaching and learning environment that can help you and your students to achieve more. So give me just one second so that I can connect Amit to our call. ອັນຈັ່ງກໍມາອີ່ຕູ້ສະນິດຈຸນຂອງເຮົາຈຸມຫນຶ່ງວິຄະມັນມັນຕອບຂອງເຮົາຄືລູກອະມິດປາວ່
fortunate people like us who are normal and I don't have you know the visibility issues or hearing uh, issues or uh, you know other issues that that you know can come in the way of their teaching and learning so how do we do this we want to make sure that we do this through having a deep commitment so that we make this technology available and yes it is absolutely true you can get started with office 365 for free and i'm going to tell you how to do that and not only how to do that why you should be doing that because what we have noticed is that there have been a lot of uh, in the in the last 12 months what we've noticed is there are a prolific uh, pro, uh, a, a, a big kind of uh, adoption of multiple tools in schools, which has created a lot of silos of data. What we are attempting to do is create a platform that you can bring all of this together into a environment, which is a digital hub for you to be able to do your teaching and learning from rather than having to go to multiple different places. Because one of the things we've also noticed is that in a 45 minute classroom, you do not have the time to switch between tools and be able to you know manipulate different uh, uh, environments so what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump out of my powerpoint and share with you my screen so you know exactly what to do to go and get started and 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 i'm going to send you these links in the um, in the chat window so that you can ac actually see what's going on so this is where you go and get office 365 for free and i'll repeat you do get started for free so there is the A1 offer that allows you to get all of the office applications, all of the services in the cloud to do you know, events like the one we are doing right now. We could even run that event in a, in a tool called Teams or run classrooms in, 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 uh, in, the, in the cloud for free. Uh, and, and this gives you unlimited storage in the cloud for individuals. It gives you 50 gigabytes of email. And it is, it is just the most amazing platform for you to get started with. So I'm going to give you a link to all of this so that you can uh, you know, go and get your school registered if you are not already doing so. And what does this all look like? So when you land up, you land up in a page like this where you're able to start, you know, obviously creating, communicating and do all the things that you would normally do. But one of the tools that we've really introduced and made possible for uh, educators to connect with each other is this thing called Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft Teams is really all about making sure that you're able to bring your teaching and learning in the one place. Because what we've noticed is, as I said earlier, there are, there are tools for this, there's a tool for that. You go and get one tool for video conferencing, you go and get one tool for assessment, you get go and do another tool for engagement, you get another tool for you know, various aspects. So what we did was we actually talked to a lot of educators over the last few years and see, well, how do we bring all of this together? So how do I communicate with my uh, school and my class? How do I create you know, uh, specialized uh, groups so that you can have group conversations and we can have breakouts and those sort of things and do that through a simple interface? The idea here is to keep you within the one interface. And Teams is attempting to do that by making sure that we can have communication, so we can make announcements, we can, you know, uh, you know, share praise with each other when we're doing well, or we're just having, uh, or we want to do some kind of a conversation. We can do all of that here on a day-to-day -day basis. Not only that, we can have conversations not just with text, but with, you know, emojis, with gifs, so we can have a little bit of fun. We can encourage each other by giving each other you know, uh, stickers so that we can actually, you know, know that we are doing a great job. And those sort of things are, are already built in. So we don't need to kind of think about this as separate tools. Uh, then we can bring in videos. Uh, in fact, we do provide you a secure video streaming platform called Stream that's built right into Office 365. And it's again, it's available for free within the platform. So you can take advantage of that. You can integrate other applications like, for example, YouTube. So if you're seeing where my mouse is, you can actually see that I'm able to integrate other platforms into this as well. Uh, I can use this to take polls by using uh, third party. I can bring in applications like Wikipedia. So if I wanted to bring in a Wikipedia article about Cambodia right into the chat, I could do that. So I could just enter that and that would go into the chat and we could have a conversation about this particular Wikipedia. So now everyone could start collaborating and, and, uh, and reacting to this particular item that we have, we have shared. If we need to do a search or we need to look up news, we can do that. 
so you know we can we can go and get uh, what's happening and we could have a conversation about what's in the news uh, and so on and so forth so there's a lot of possibilities just from the conversation view and by the way this is completely extensible so we can add more applications so there are applications for education that are being added literally every day so you can integrate with kahoot we can integrate with quizlet flipgrid by the way flipgrid is also another application that is available from microsoft as part of my uh, office 365 again an ability for you to create videos and share videos with each other from within teams so again we're not trying to get you out of the teams environment uh, we integrate with menti and and so on and so forth right so you will see and this list keeps on getting bigger and bigger every day so that's something that we are bringing together in one place as a value add for all of you to be able to not just uh, communicate with each other through chat but also interact with each other by leveraging applications the next thing that we also do here is we bring together the ability for you to share files and be able to go and uh, you know uh, get all of these things in one place so that all of your files that are relevant to this particular class, in this case, this is the physical science class, I can bring all of them together in the one place. I can also use these files to also create assignments, right? So that I can say, hey, please read the assignment on Amazon Rainforest and then provide your input and answer these questions, right? Those sort of things can be done from right within here. Teachers have a very uh, special area called class materials, which is locked for the uh, students. So only teachers can add files here. Students can only read the files. This creates a secure place for you to, uh, you know, create content and share the content from here. So that way, you know, that the students cannot go and uh, change it, edit it, or delete it, or what have you. So that's another way for you to actually think about how we bring files into the conversation that you already might have, because a lot of uh, teachers have already created lesson plans inside PowerPoint, inside Excel, inside Word that we can leverage and put inside here. And by the way, when you click on this, you will see that it starts the PowerPoint within Teams. So again, I don't expect you to get out of Teams to go and be able to uh, take advantage of this. So it becomes the one place for you to start creating content, uh, displaying content, sharing content, and, and being able to use that content from the one place. So as you notice, I've not actually changed my uh, window in, in doing so. And, and when I go to a lot of classrooms, there's a lot of coordination time that goes into, oh, this is in this tab. Have you opened this? Have you not opened this? Teams gets rid of all of that. Let's, let me do a quick demo for you as well. I'm going to create a PowerPoint in, in front of you, and we're going to make a very nice looking PowerPoint just by using AI. So for example, um, if I wanted to make a presentation on oceans, I could do that. But I could also, if you notice, it's actually using AI to go and create a more immersive uh, uh, you know, PowerPoint for me. For example, it's, it knows I'm using the word oceans, so it will start formatting it in such a way that it will start you know, reflecting the theme of the conversation, in this case, oceans, right? Now, if I was to go and change this to something else, and, and, and again, this, this is happening in the cloud uh, uh, for you. Um, let's go, we're gonna talk about planes, for example. And it's using AI again to look at what's happening, and there you go. It's now going and figured out that we're talking about planes. It could be planes as in aeroplanes, or it could be planes as in you know land planes um, so this these are things that we had done in in the background to make it easier for you to create more immersive good looking content that is going to engage your your end end user and of course we can not only just do this we can insert um, you know things like uh, you know it'll create its own 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 designs for you but we can also create more immersive content by including videos and other things right into the uh, actual uh, PowerPoint. So PowerPoint is a great example of how we're integrating a traditional application into a new application, which is uh, Teams in this case. Okay, so the other thing we can do within Teams is this, is this concept called class notebook. And this is quite different to what you may be used to with other tools that you might have come across. Fundamentally, what we have done is we've brought together the concept of a notebook, but made it digital. 
So what we found was, you know, a lot of teachers obviously are very familiar with how we create notebooks and use notebooks in the classroom to, you know, give content or, or you know, students takes their notes in the in the notebook or they do their work in the notebook and then they hand in the notebook to go and get their work assessed. What we did was we created a digital equivalent of that. So now what we can do is we can use a collaboration space for everyone to collaborate. So we can go and, you know, in this case, it might be a project that we want to talk about and we can go and create content together, right? We can all, all contribute into this. Or we can have a content library where the teacher can just create content and provide it to the student. The student cannot edit what's in the content library. They can edit what's in the, in the collaboration space because that's what we're meant to do is collaborate and create content. The next thing we do is we create a space for individual students. So you'll notice here Adele, Al, Alex have their own individual area. And because I have logged in as a teacher, I can see what Adele has done in terms of the ocean project. I can see what Al would have done in terms of their ocean project, right? So we know exactly what has been done. We can assess their homework. When a student logs in, they won't see each other's space. They'll only see their own space. So if Adele logged in, Adele would only see Adele's uh, space, right? She won't be able to look at what Al's done. So this creates for a very easy way for us to have a, a collaborative as well as a one-to-one -one uh, conversation between the teacher and the student. And the teacher can have a conversation with the entire classroom at large. And one of the other things that we've done, uh, which is gets a lot of uh, praise, is this ability for us to create content and distribute it. So we can distribute pages, we can distribute it to individuals, we can distribute it to groups, or we can distribute it to the uh, multiple classrooms at the same time. We can distribute entire sections, we can content entire libraries, and we can also review student work from right within the class notebook. So we don't have to go to different tools. Again, what you probably notice, one of the things that we are doing here is not getting you to use multiple different tools. That's the aim of how the Microsoft 365 platform has been designed to be used in the classroom. Now, of course, you'll say, well, I want to be able to do things like I do with, uh, with, with tools to assign work to them. And I can do that right within Teams because we are able to create quizzes and assignments from within this environment. So you're able to go in and, and assign particular work. Oh, by the way, one more thing you probably have noticed here is I can, if, I, if anyone has any questions, they can just click on this button to meet and we can all have a video conference right immediately. Because if there is anything that needs to be you know, done uh, on an immediate pro uh, basis, we can either meet now or we can schedule a meeting. I'll get to that in a minute. But in terms of the assignments, what you'll notice here is that we are able to create assignments we can add rubrics to those assignments. We can put in you know, assignment who we are assigning this to, either to the entire class, or we can choose individuals within the class, right? So we can say this is only for the more advanced students, right? And and, and that can be made available to only those group of students or, or otherwise, right? And then the other thing we can do is we can bring in content by adding resources to these assignments. And this can be from the files that we've created earlier. And you probably notice that we are able to go in and bring in any of the content that we have created, right? That was created earlier. Or I can bring it in from Teams. So if I go to the physical ed, I can go into documents and under general, you'll see the demo Cambodia app uh, thing that I just did earlier. I can attach that into this and I can ask the students to do something with that particular file. And that will be copied to their individual uh, workspace as well. And they can work on it and submit that work back in. And once you have done that, we can also grade them. We can grade the individual user right from within here so that it has the ability for you to you know, then provide feedback in, in, in form of um, uh, you know, either visual, uh, you, know, you can write on the notebook. By the way, sorry, one more thing I should have uh, informed you earlier. The notebooks are not just limited to typing, but also you are able to use ink-based um, uh, feedback as well. So you'll notice in here, for example, this can do maths. This can be used for uh, you know, creating notes uh, using handwriting. If you have a 
digital ink enabled device and we strongly encourage you all to purchase digital ink enabled devices so that you can actually uh, use this um, in a more effective way because even from a feedback perspective we can provide feedback either by writing in it in here right or we can even record our feedback directly in here we can dictate and have it have it record directly inside um, inside a one note so there are multiple ways you can actually provide feedback so that's some some of the things that we can uh, do within uh, teams and beyond grades we can also bring in other applications right we can bring in kahoot like i said to you i gave you a demo earlier on we can log in into uh, or if i wanted to bring in um, a document and it could be a document that is word it could be a document that is not word so it's not limited to just microsoft tools this could be if you are already an existing school that uses other platforms we can integrate and bring those into this this environment as well uh, and of course we, we are able to you know bring in other resources like for example if you wanted to bring in a, a page from uh, like a, a video from YouTube, for example, we could bring that into into your conversation as well. So it could be anything, really. But there are multiple ways you can start using this platform to, you know, start creating a very uh, customized uh, space for you to, you know, work within your classroom. It is not limited to what we are providing out of the box. Now, one last thing I will show you is this thing called Insights. Now, one of the things that we have learned in the last 12 months is that so many tools are being used, but we don't know how effective they are at providing the teaching and learning outcomes that we so desire from our students. So what we've done is we've created this thing called an Insights app, and I'm going to demonstrate this to you through a video that has been made earlier, and I'll send you a link to this video as well. What Insights does is literally gives us the ability for the teacher to understand what's happening in their classroom. And I'll show you this in a minute. So for example, we've got a classroom here. We can add this app called Insights into Teams and it's available for free, right? What it does, it gives the teacher the ability to go and see how their class is doing. In this case, you can see here, how is my activity on each day? Which students are inactive? Have any of the students missed any submissions? are they missing meetings so we can even get a very high level overview of whether they're attending your online classes or not so you it's it's even doing attendance for you automatically right when we jump into the classroom we can even see things like okay well i want to be able to see you know inactive students i want to be able to see how much communication is happening between the students how many students have been inactive this week or what activity is happening you know which meetings were the students are absent from uh why is why, why is a particular student late for a particular class you know we can have those conversations that that gives us insights into having a more meaningful conversation with the students we can of course look at their grades as well because we can grade within teams so you can actually see what's happening within the actual classroom and 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 reflect back on why a particular student might be doing better or worse than the class average. Uh, for example, here we can look at the activity of each student. So we can see what activity each individual student has been doing in the last seven days, last 30 days, or in the last day. We can see whether they are actually paying attention and are leveraging the resources. So we can go drill down at, at a very detailed level to understand whether the resources that are provided in the class are leveraged by the student as part of the teaching and learning process. So those are things that we really are focused on to give you more in-depth insights into this. So to get started on all of this, so you're probably wondering, this is great. How do I get started on all of this? And the way you do that is, first of all, I strongly encourage you to join our Educator Center community. It's free for you to join. It's for teachers and to, for teachers to learn how to use our platform to go and learn how to use it in the context of teaching and learning. So you will see multiple different teaching and learning paths. And, and my favorite part is you can go and collect badges for this so that you can share that, that you are aware and you are certified or, or you've taken the time to learn a particular technology and are adopting that technology in your class. So there's badges to be had, 
that we can actually showcase or even show on LinkedIn and other things. So you're able to showcase that you are putting in the effort to be a better educator in the context of teaching and learning online. Um, there is, you know, how do we use blended approach for teaching and learning? How do we use Office 365 and Windows? So this is not about using the tools. This is about using the tools in a particular way. How do you create creativity in the classroom? For the, like I said earlier, how do we use the tools to meet people who may have dyslexia? Uh, and we have you know very strong tools to help you with uh, dyslexia. One of the things that I will show you, and you may like, uh, is this thing called learning tools. Learning tools is something that 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 we created very early on because we noticed a lot of our own uh, children who are you know kids of our own um, employees were struggling to read. So we created this thing called uh, the immersive reader. The immersive reader allows you to create a uh, very safe environment for you to learn uh, to read. So in this case, what you'll notice is I'm able to use AI to go and create a very easy. So these are the things we can do, uh, right? Using in, we can highlight things like syllables. We can add nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. We can show that these are lab labels for them. We can either create line focus. My favorite thing, we can actually translate this from English to other languages, and this will do the whole document for us uh, quite easily. So these are all things that are built in. And by the way, all of these things are available for free as part of the Office 365 platform. So I, I just wanted to give you guys a bit of a, a run through. This was not supposed to be in depth. I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of what's going on with the Microsoft platform. I want to thank you all for being here with me and spending the time with me. I hope there are questions that have been raised by this. So if you are interested, uh, please let me know and uh, we can uh, talk to you about it. Thank you. Uh, and over back to you, Idea Consultancy team. Such a, such a useful and immersive tool. Uh, I'm sure that everybody is so interested in Microsoft. So um, unfortunately, we do not have time for your live Q&A session. However, um, everybody, please, thank you so much for all your questions. We do see them. Um, if you would like to direct all of your questions at Amit, because he is super active right now on Hopin. Um, yep. Yes? Yes, yes. And if you have any questions, I'm also giving you my email address. So you can all direct your questions as well. So if, if you can't address all of the questions today, we can obviously uh, go and um, you know address them later on. Thank yeah. you again for the time and um, all the best for the rest of the event. Thank you so much, Amit, for joining us. Very informative. Thank yep, you. My pleasure. Happy Thank you. Rest of the day, everybody, please do contact Amit personally for all of your questions on Microsoft. Thank you. Thank you. អរគុណដល់លោកអមិត Okay, so now we're going to be starting with Miss Win Lala's presentation on 360 Ed. Stay tuned.
Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. Uh, greetings from your mom, Ninglaba. I'm Lala Wen, CEO and founder of 368. Today, I would like to invite you to discover the future education together with us. <laughs> As a mother, I want the best possible education for my daughter and her generation. I want to make sure that she is well equipped with the skills and confidence to face today's challenges as well as any kids around the world. Empowering the next generation of Myanmar with the most advanced technology takes a team with skills, experience, and dedication. But hey, don't just take my word for it. Need a team that makes it all happen. I went through the same education myself, so I want to be part of the change. The idea of using technology in teaching and learning they really impressed me. I'm learning a lot for working here. Our goal at 360i is to use what we have and to make quality education accessible to all. Today, everyone has a smartphone, and what we want to showcase is how it's more than just But we can't do this alone. In order for us to help more people, we need to scale. From increasing inventory, expanding curriculum, to making it more accessible around the world. Join us as we change the way we teach, learn, and improve the lives of children and communities everywhere. Investing in a brighter future starts with you. Hey, I'm Nala Wen, CEO and founder of 368, and I'd like to invite you to discover the future of education. I am Nala, CEO and founder of 368. Uh, a social enterprise uh, based out of Singularity University in NASA Research Park in uh, California. But the team, the whole team is now in Myanmar, working together hand on hand with teachers, uh, parents, students, and educators to make 
quality education accessible to all the students, especially in the bottom media. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm very proud to have a daughter who constantly challenged me and also inspire me to develop the learning tools that fits with 21st century. The reason I'm mentioning 21st century is the education, it's a game in a way, but that game hasn't changed for many, many centuries, many, many decades. But it's time to change and it's time to reimagine the future of education. Previously, teachers placed the role of a sage on the stage, but 21st century requires teachers to help the students be the best sports as, as much as possible. So to play the role of the guide on the site and with the technology, and we can help make that happen to make the learning smoother, much more effective, and also much more easy and accessible to you all. Country like Myanmar and Vietnam cannot afford, country like Myanmar, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, cannot afford a traditional linear development. Traditional trajectories are very long, slow, and expensive. I believe Myanmar, Cambodia, and ASEAN nations have tremendous opportunity to leapfrog and benefit from the emerging technology like augmented reality, virtual reality, and existing infrastructure like mobile phones. In Myanmar, that's all we got. People have smartphones. They don't have computers. They do not have internet everywhere, but they have mobile phones. So we leverage mobile phone to bring learning alive with augmented reality by partnering with Myanmar Ministry of Education, by scanning, by digitizing the uh, national curriculum with augmented reality. So Myanmar students can scan the flashcards and can scan the textbooks of the government and make learning pops in 3D where they can rotate and see around. I'm very proud of my team, uh, 70 plus individuals working full-time in developing the learning materials, which in a way helping change the future of education for their brothers, sisters, daughters, and sons. We believe that we have this opportunity to reshape with the infrastructure we have. And we don't have to wait until the time is right. The COVID-19 has pushed us to make learning available and accessible to everyone. And I think we can do it together. If you're interested in scaling, and taking our technology and taking our learning solutions to your nation, please, please let us know. We'll be more than happy and humble to bring our learnings to you. The rural education has changed. It's not the gap that we have to be guilty about. It is now the opportunity to impact. Uh, we can shape the rural education together. Worldwide, we are facing a mismatch of teachers and students, but the rural schools have especially always struggle to acquire and retain talented teachers. In the developing countries, there's a population explosion of promising young people, and we're not even close to graduating enough teachers to teach them, let alone placing them where they are needed. And rural education has a direct impact on rural incomes, we all know that, but rural schools often are under resourced and struggle to recruit talents in both developing and undeveloped economies. Due to the challenges of getting good education for the children, many parents, like my grandparents, migrated to overcrowded cities, creating a permanent rural brain drain. What can be done to prevent this? Believe it or not, the solutions to the problem turns out to be one of the fastest and least expensive ones. And we need to make changes related to our expectations from teachers and the way students learn. We need to reimagine 
the way we learn, the way we interact with learning materials. It doesn't have to be 2D and flat. It can be 3D, it can be imaginative, it can be fun while learning. You may want to argue that this could take years. Stop dreaming. <laughs> yes, this could take years, but through the magic of software and technology, in Myanmar, we're already providing low-cost tools built around traditional textbooks, traditional texts in flashcards form and match them with the augmented reality tools to low-cost smartphones using mobile or Wi-Fi. And 368 team is already providing fast-rate science and ESL programs anywhere, everywhere. And the teachers change the role. They migrate from the all-knowing lecturer to the co-learning specialist guiding the students through the automated software and textbook program. It is hard work, but rare in development investment. The results are almost immediate in better achievement, higher potential, and personal confidence for both students and teachers. The future education is now and is in the palm of students' hand. Let's discover together and collaborate to make learning a better uh, experience for all. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, thank you to Ms. Lala for her presentation. So now we do have time for a quick Q&A session with her. So please give us one moment while we connect to her. Thank you. Echo. Um, hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Uh, you can fix that by closing the stage tab. Yes. I so can. you should have one tab. Great. Okay. Cool. Hi. Do you have any questions? Hi. Uh, welcome, Miss Lala. Thank you. I'm very excited to yes, be. We do. Uh, with thank you. you so much. So much for joining us. My pleasure. Questions from the audience. So, um, just to let everybody know, uh, please do drop your questions into the chat now to uh, to ask Miss Lala any queries that you might have. So we can start now. Uh, we have time for uh, a couple of questions. So the first one is from Mr. Butira, and he says that a parent's dream is to raise kids to their potential. And he is excited to see how you develop education models that are accessible to kids leveraging available platforms and on emerging smartphone technology. Do you have an open class? Do you, do you have open classes? Do you have open your class for students abroad? Do you open your classes for students abroad? Uh, yes, I'll be happy to uh, answer that in personally. I am uh, dropping my email. Uh, please reach out to me and I'll happy to uh, share the resources later. And we have 
uh, abroad now uh, in different countries uh, in Asia too, but definitely not in Cambodia yet. But not in Cambodia yet. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. The next question is from um, Lai Miri, and she says that you, what inspired you to have such an idea to help education? And what challenges have you had and how have you solved them? Yes, uh, I myself was a teacher, uh, elementary school teacher for, for about five years. Then I studied abroad in the States for my bachelor in education. Then I came back, became teacher's trainer, school founder, and also education policy advocate. So I wear many hats in education for about 20 years. Uh, lately, uh, the new hat is a mom mom of a digital native so my daughter uh, she goes to international school and she comes home and expect me to teach her chinese and french and uh, japanese it's, it's a multilingual school so she comes home and expect me to teach and i barely speak two languages so i developed this app um, this one is a uh, eight languages app eight languages learning including english so she's learning with that and that is the head you know going abroad uh, in many countries now so that was the first idea, but uh, I also had a childhood trauma and uh, you know, a fear toward uh, science learning. I wasn't the best student. I was an ADHD kid and also dyslexic, but my mom is a teacher. She never gave up on me and she kept on using different learning tools. You know, She could find, she could create around the house to teach me. So I become a, a good learner and I went full scholarships to study in States four times. The first time for my bachelor and also master at the Harvard Kennedy School and also uh, selected to be attend the Global Solution Program at the NASA, together with the uh, Singularity University. So these are the results of teachers not giving up, parents not giving up on kids. And uh, now I become a parent myself. So I want to give uh, learning tools that are exciting, uh, fun, and also not fear related, uh, not fear associated to learning. So that's my inspiration in a, in a way. I've been a learner, but not the best learner myself. I was a challenge student, challenging student, um, but I uh, made it my way. So I want to give back and I've been blessed with many study opportunities in abroad. Um, about 10 years in the States for bachelor, master and leadership programs and also setting up the com company in Silicon Valley with the support from Google. So I want to give back and this is my way of giving back to uh, Myanmar and now growing internationally. Thanks for the question. Good answer. Um, uh, some of our viewers to see no more about the app. Is it free access and um, is yes. available to other rural areas. Additionally, if you have any idea on any other tools or apps that students can use on their smartphones in the rural, rural areas. Right. Uh, if you go to our website, www.360ed.org, uh, you will see the, um, you will see uh, projects and pages, and some of the projects are for free. In Myanmar, we partner with the Ministry of Education. So we made English language learning for grade one, grade two, grade three, grade six already for free for four million of students. And these are open access. So students in Cambodia, if they want to study English, you can also benefit from logging into our, our app and also start doing it now. You don't have to pay a penny. That's our donation. That's our um, giving back to the community, giving back to the, you know, um, as a whole, um, especially in COVID-19, it's very rare and very difficult. And another great thing about our app is it is offline. Once you download it, you don't have to be online all the times and you don't require fancy devices like computer or, you know, any smart, uh, smart board or anything. You just need your phone, smartphone, grab your smartphone and uh, look for 360 ED in the Play Store and download it and can start using it. So four great subjects, uh, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade six English subjects are already free and available online and uh, all other apps. Uh, also, there are demo cards and demo that you can uh, you can download and uh, you can try it if you have more uh, if you need more information i'll be happy to answer my email as well i know the time is short but uh, i'll be more than happy to uh, create this exponential impacts in education beyond your mom thank you okay i think that you have answered all of the questions that people have um do you have any further comments 
Uh, we are a social enterprise, and uh, we, uh, for the work we are doing, we believe that uh, society has the challenges, but our government alone uh, it shouldn't be the uh, it shouldn't be the duties of the uh, government alone to handle and solve it. So, as an individual citizen, and uh, we gather together in a partnership with the government. So, this type of uh, private-public partnership can scale to other countries and also uh, help uh, in the country's uh, education reform process. And especially in COVID-19, the access to continuous learning is a challenge, not only in Myanmar worldwide. The Myanmar challenge are <clears throat> similar to Cambodian challenge uh, because we do not have the luxury to have access to internet all the time or the laptop or desktop all the time. So we're happy to share the resources that we have built in Myanmar and also across uh, Cambodia, our friends in uh, Asia, you know, all, all around the world. And we're talking with uh, uh, some African countries as well to scale uh, solutions to Africa. So far, our users are in Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, uh, Japan, not in Cambodia, Unfortunately, uh, we are very much looking forward to uh, partnering with uh, strategic partners in the education sector or technology sector, or you know even the government uh, itself to leverage uh, to leapfrog. You know, it took us four years to reach where we are, and it took us uh, 80 staff full time working, you know, uh, to reach where we are. But uh, being uh, in Cambodia, you can just leapfrog and you know uh, skip all the steps and take it to Cambodia. And if you want to know how, uh, you can go to uh, 360.org uh, and find out more or personally contact me at lala.wing at 360.org. I'm more than happy to answer your questions and uh, explore the opportunities together. Thank you. That is all the time we have for you today, but thank you for an informative session and uh, so many people want to connect with you. So please, after your session, do drop your contact into the stage and event chat so people can directly connect with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your product. Thank you, your app, sorry. Okay, have a great rest of the day. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you so much to Lala. And up next is Mr. Vitali, who is the director of IT Step Academy, Switzerland. And IT Step is one of our organizers for the event here. So um, looking forward to his presentation up next. Please stay tuned. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Cambodia. Good morning, the forum. Uh, my name is Vitaly. I'm representing STEP Academy. However, not uh, Cambodia, but uh, Switzerland. Currently in Poland. As you know, STEP Academy is a big global organization, and uh, we have education for different groups, for different uh, directions, on different topics. And uh, of course, uh, we are very interested into everything which is new, everything which is just coming to education. And one of the biggest recent topics, which was very popular three to five years ago on Coursera, for example, gamification course was one of the most popular, uh, is uh, game design, how we can implement game design into education. So um, let's first talk about different uh, words that are very, very 
specific to game design, to gamification, and uh, th there are three, which is important to understand the difference. First one is obviously games. Um, so games are collaborative, usually activities that have a specific set of goals and specific set of boundaries, specific set of rules. For example, chess can be treated as a, as a game. But uh, there are sometimes differences when people say play and game. So play is uh, uh, an activity which doesn't have a specific boundaries or rules. We can play on the guitar, so it has many different options. But when there is a specific guitar hero, this is already a game because it has specific rules, goals, and boundaries. Simulations are also very important in education, but it's not uh, very connected to a personal choice or not very connected to um, our virtual, so to say, world. It's usually a real world uh, process and it's a real world <laughs> simulation. So that's why the world, the word simulation is using to describe this. And uh, it's just uh, um, specific elements, we will talk about them later, that make uh, the process of uh, any activity a bit more funny, a bit more um, interesting. So why do we need uh, game design in education? So first of all, as uh, any game designer, you will know the process of uh, the progress of your users so where they are what they learn and what they would like to learn more it also helps us to motivate learners a bit more with providing some more opportunities and a bit more personalized approach or at least just a funnier way to deliver any specific information uh, for us it's easy to um, simulate any activity and uh, build a confidence before they make a mistake, they can try it uh, online. And of course, we can give and we can receive a very important thing, which is a crucial part in modern education, which is feedback. So, just a bit of step aside about gaming. So, this is one of the most popular games so far. It was released in 2011, and uh, so far, it's still one of the best. Uh, Rocking games, which uh, earned uh, a billion less than uh, Avatar the movie. So I think in 15 days, when Avatar earned in 18 days. So in two years, uh, people spent well almost three million years totally playing the game, which proves the concept that we probably like playing games. Only right now we have a specific challenge to make education as engaging as video games and still keep it valuable. And uh, we will use it by, we will make it by introducing game mechanics into education. And we will build them around future skills. Well, future skills are also super important concept, which was uh, re-updated recently by uh, the World Economic Forum in their report on the future of jobs. The 15 most important, uh, and you can check them uh, in this report. I'll just highlight that in bold all those activities which can be easier, more, more swiftly learned with uh, gaming than others. Uh, just a quick feedback, I will not read one after another, is that uh, we have a rise of more complex skills like for example, problem solving or critical thinking or analytical thinking, comparing to personal skills. So this, uh, this big shift will impact highly uh, our children so, and us as well in five, 10 years when uh, what we will need to do is uh, to come up with better solution rather than just quick solutions and not no more, but design more one of the good examples of games is uh, Terra Genesis, Terra Genesis that was released on all mobile platforms, where you are a leader of uh, a colony on another planet, 
usually you start with Mars, where you have to first build your first uh, cities. Then you can uh, find out your way of uh, making a planet uh, available for people to live. So you have to design how to make water, you have to understand how to make uh, uh, biodiversity, you have to understand how to keep population running. Uh, there is also a lot about different cultures. There's five different fractions that all have their own specific uh, bonuses or drawbacks. And uh, you, in progress of this game, you learn a lot about uh, what awaits us for when we start explorations. So just two different types of games with two different uh, settings and two different approaches. So when we speak about uh, gamification or just game design, there are specific mechanics. So first one is setup. So where the game will be played and as one is rules. We discussed already that there is no game without boundaries. And then there is a process, a progression. So how we continue through the game and how we can win the game and how we can be more successful playing the game, how we can get to being a master in this game. So for example, just super quickly about the game that you all know, Mario, you can, you can see that on the first level, there is a rise of complexity. Here we have no enemies, here just one, plus we have additional bonus, smaller jumps, higher jumps, one enemy, two enemies, then we have a place where we can simply fall, more enemies and so on and then the, here is the end so this is an example how we build games and now is my question why not to build the same way our courses our programs why not to use a uh, specific technology of players that we have games and to apply it to our education so they're specifically uh, distributed by orientation so they would like to work on their own or they would like to work in groups and how competitive they are. So if there is low competency, if there is high competency. So uh, for different groups, so to say, of uh, players, we can design different challenges. Just for, as an example, if you build any platforms that should help people to pass an exam and to get the highest marks, of course, you have to design thinking that uh, your competition is higher and this is self-oriented. In case you are designing a system that will foster collaboration and you have to find a common solution. So orientation should be on a group and there is, should be no competition. So you don't have to design, for example, levels in this case. So key gamification mechanics, um, so-called LBP leaderboards, pages, and points are very important for those who, of course, seek for competition, as well as task difficulty and end of the game. Some games are not without any end. They're just like exploratory games. So they're interested, interesting for lower two uh, options. Uh, multiplayer games, yes, no. And this is a big shift right now is that everyone is searching for a way to still play as a team, to compete, even if there is a competition still as a team. So for example, when you design a program, you can say that there is 70% of mark for individual work and 30% of mark for a group project, like an example. So specific game elements that we have are implemented. So we already spoke a lot about progression. So different points, badges, leveling, leaderboards. This is a table of ranks, so who is the higher one. Progression bars is from zero to 100, for example. You get it and only after you can achieve some specific tasks or specific, uh, specific use. <clears throat> so certificates, of course, are super important. Here you can see a screenshot of pages, I believe, from Code Academy. Reports are very similar to achievements. However, if we treat achievements as levels of mastery, like for example, ranks, like military ranks, rewards are given for something very special. So for example, if you visited a website already a month in a row, you get a special reward. 
you may not be achieving during every day something specific, but it's to kind of show the presence and show respect to the things you do. Some specific power ups are also very important. During a specific limited period of time, your player will be more capable of doing things than other players. Personalization is a big idea everywhere. So if you design any system, if you design any course, take it into account that uh, people have to be in charge of avatars they're selecting, in charge of the names they're selecting, in charge of uh, different ways to express themselves, as well as during speaking or just during conversation. Another big idea is a story. This is a real screenshot of a virtual office. And in this offices, you can have your own stories and you can have your own quests. So this is aside from the main game, you can have a small game inside. And I'm happy that I have a bit more time uh, and to speak a bit about uh, the things we are doing in Step Academy based on all those information that I gave to you already. So we have uh, our own service, which we call MAPS, Measurable uh, Personalization System. And uh, here, this is actually a course. This is a program on Python. And it doesn't look like a usual book or doesn't look like a usual PDF with all the tasks and challenges. It's more like a journey for every person to take part in and uh, design their own way of doing things. So you can go here. You can design this branch, you can explore these branches and so on. So the idea of map is a bit in reverse. So this any no students can uh, pass all the map. So it's designed with three to five times more redundancy uh, in order to, to complete it. So you just have to spend enormous amount of time to complete. So now a student is in charge of their own learning process. You can see different coins, crystals, the points in different ways. You can see badges here, and these are skills badges. You can see the hero personalization. I'm not a very good one in drawing my heroes. <laughs> you can see uh, as well that uh, they're big levels. So some of them, they cost up to 15 points to pass. Some of them cost one point, so every person can design their own idea and can manage the resources the way they would like to manage. A few more uh, screenshots of the system. So you can exchange earned coins and crystals into specific armor to upgrade your hero. This is a friend of mine who is more uh, playing the game than me. And uh, here you can see the history of your words, your productivity, and your progress. So this system is based on um, a small assumption, small hypothesis that uh, students and uh, just pupils, uh, people, they like playing because it gives them a specific freedom of choice. So the same for education. Here is a person is able to select their own pathway. And just a small quote at the very end, that life is more fun if you play games. So play nice games and uh, use all those game design things into in your programs, in your uh, education design. Thank you. All right. So that was Mr. Vitali on gamification for e-learning. So uh, we are going to connect with him now. Uh, for a live Q&A session. So please drop any questions that you have for him into the chat. Hello, Vitaly. Hello. Hi, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, your game, your app is very interesting. So what we do want to know right now is feedback from students and parents alike, what their um, what their feedback is for you. Well, that's, that's a very interesting feedback. 
<laughs> so there is no uh, patterns at this stage. So we are quite uh, surprised. We expected that there would be one line of comments or one line of ideas, but every person treats the system differently. And uh, we are happy that actually this is a main line that uh, there is so, so many ways, uh, so many branches for every person that they are learning their own subjects uh, and uh, exploring their own uh, formats. Like someone is more about tests, someone is more about assignments that should be controlled by a mentor, someone is more about helping other people. So that's quite interesting that uh, we designed uh, a system that uh, gives every particular typology of players to, to do their own things. So the only feedback that we have uh, in terms of time and in terms of measurables is that uh, students, they spend not two, three hours as we expected per week, but up to seven, nine hours learning by playing. That is incredible. Wow. Um, okay, thank you. Um, for our first question from the audience, uh, David Horn wants to know, uh, do you think gamification and e-learning could worsen students' game addiction? Uh, what do you mean worsen? So that they will be playing more games or that they will be canceling game playing. Mm. Um, we, we, can, we can treat them both. <laughs> but, both. Uh, from my, yeah, from my experience, I think that um, as, as having uh, before joining Step Academy, a big marketing uh, experience in actually creating the apps for mobile phones, I know that uh, those marketers they went really far away in terms of psychology and education unfortunately we stayed on the same level so i don't treat games as uh, something which is good or bad but unfortunately those uh, mechanics they use at this stage are more powerful than any other mechanics we are using in education so it's really hard to build a personal intrinsic motivation right now when you can just quickly join uh you can just open the phone and uh, have some like, five to ten fifteen minutes of just playing game without any understanding why um the big thing that uh, i forgot to mention in uh, in my presentation and i will use this opportunity to tell about it that uh, right now all the games that our children are playing they're based on reaction so how quickly you make a decision um it is not that interesting for us uh, for the future i mean because in the future all this quick uh, decisions will be made by mostly by artificial intelligence or just simple algorithm. What we need to foster in children is uh, making a complex decisions. So if we are able to build a game that will require children to think a lot, to spend time working together, discussing and uh, finding the best way and win-win strategies, then I think that the future uh, very interesting. because of uh, the current common perception that from parents, especially that gaming is a bad source of addiction. Um, so thank you for your answer. Um, and our follow-up question is from Lala, our previous presenter. Um, she herself is a gamer and she loves gamifying learning. And she wants to know if there's any research backing up showing how gamification enhances learning. Well, yes, there are, there are many researches. So this presentation was uh, based on researches, actually. So there are several of them. I haven't put the links, but uh, well, I can send you as a, as a follow up all those links to PDFs to, to, to those researches. So it's they started to be done five years ago. Uh, now the trend is a bit decreasing, but still there are many people who explore those things. And luckily, gamification went also to corporate education. So that's why corporations right now, they invest a lot into those researches. And how about gamification and e-learning in Cambodia? Because Cambodian students are not used to this technique. Do you think it would be effective in the this Cambodian local environment and students? Yeah, well, I think that uh, the first uh, step towards gamification or just towards different uh, pedagogy, I would say like this, is uh, changing the mark, the assessment system. So 
So usually we have assessment a system when, for example, you have 10 questions, uh, 100 marks. If you answer all 10, you get 100. If you answer nine, so your mark starts to get decreased. Well, gamification is about a different approach. Uh, you start from zero. So your level is zero, you have zero experience. And then you start getting this experience. And uh, for example, now you have 10, 20, 30. And you may get to nine points, but now you treat them completely differently. So now it's not a failure, but it's almost you achieve the maximum stage. So any any teacher can use this tool right now. So just like change a bit the perspective, and then all the rest of this gamification things will come. Will, will come. Into their learning plans. Okay, um, we that's, do. That's actually more natural than uh, just like uh, uh, in real life. You start from zero, <laughs> and then you, you go to mastery, not vice versa. Exactly. Uh, okay, so we do have time for one more question. If the audience, ah, okay. Our last question is from Sina Rie, and she would like to know what level of students that can play that game. You mean uh, the game that uh, Terra Genesis or our, you mean, or our game? Um, yes, yes. Our game is, is no level, no level at all. So just you have to know that, for example, there is a map on Python that uh, requires intro level. So you can play this map uh, for a while, and then you can go to a second, a third, and fourth level. So it's designed uh, like a journey. So um, I mean, you, you don't have prerequisites for a journey. Right, uh, and and what uh, student level? So starting, what kind, what age should students be able to oh, start playing um, this? Yeah, at the moment we start with eight years old, so we don't want to go lower at this stage. Uh, but later we will do this, of course. We we would like to compete with YouTube, because <laughs> uh, the thing about this system is uh, it's a very important concept, which is inside that uh, the student is. Uh, is responsible for their actions when on uh, youtube or like uh, on just watching videos they just consume information they do not produce any any actions they don't take responsibilities hey, thank you so much vitaly for joining us today thank uh, you very much thank you uh do you have any last comments that you'd like to share with the audience before we end the session well, I'm just very, very, very excited. Now it's uh, 5 a.m. in Poland, but oh. uh, I feel very energetic and uh, I'm very impressed with with the level of organization. So good luck to you and uh, keep keep going forward. I mean, uh, you, you don't have to be <laughs> you don't have to be in Poland or you don't have to be in Sweden or in Ukraine to to make the revolution in education. You can start from your school. You can start from your kindergarten. So. From your classroom with one student it's more than enough already just take one step at a time thank you vitaly okay thank you for joining us um if you have any questions for him please do direct your messages towards him um, happen um, please connect with him he will be available after this session and uh and have a great day have a great morning vitaly <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you so much អរគុណច្រើនដល់លោកវីតាលីដែលបានចំណាយពេលធ្វើ <coughs> ក្នុងក្នុងពេលដែលយើងកំពុងប្រេកទស្សនិកជនអាចចូលទៅចូលទៅកាន់អឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺអឺ
Mr. Ping Ratana from Cambodia STEM Club on how to use tools for e-learning. So please do take this time to check out all of our exhibitors in the expo section of Hopin, or go to the networking section to meet with other like-minded educators, innovators, and practitioners. Thank you so much, and see you back in 20 minutes. ជាលោកវត្តពិសោអាយុជាតិនៃក្រុមហ៊ុនអ៊ីស៊ីខំក្រុមនាមជាក្រុមហ៊ុនក្រោលសេវាកម្មអ៊ីនធឺណែតលំ
Hi, I'm Nadine from East West International School and have been with the school for over four years and it's been a pleasure to watch education develop in Cambodia in this short time. On behalf of East West International School, we are proud sponsors of the Cambodian e-learning forum with the aim of supporting development and innovation of education in Cambodia. In the midst of a pandemic, we have been forced collectively to not only rethink education, but call on innovative teaching practices to equip our children with real world tools, as well as develop them into global citizens. At East West, Learning and teaching begins with our strong relationships within the community. Caring teaching and motivated learners use these real-world tools within the classroom. We look forward to see like-minded, forward-thinking organizations at this prestigious event. Thank you. ជំនួយសួរនៅក្នុងចំណាយជាប្រធានគ្រប់គ្រងកម្មវិធីបេសិកកម្មកម្ពុជាដែលហៅកាត់ផាក់ ដោយក្នុងការសិក្សាតាមរយៈរបស់ឡើងដែលជីវិតស្ថាប័នមួយដែលផ្លាស់អាកាសឲ្យសិក្សាសិស្សរបស់ជើងគាត់នៅតែអ
để sao tới với sầm khánh để sao đã bắt chấp bấm dương miền trung để tập ba chơi sập cò là thua ở katasa rien còn được chơi cùng khmer miền cao lộc bạ trong cả là thua đậm ná rồi mới có ai miền phò bị bại xem xem đã tôi chơi mùi thằng karin tập bạc luôn chẳng hỏi nhưng cơ thể karin này với sầm khánh hay với chơi đội bóng mới đẹp lõ sầm đẹp tại ngọc nia đậm bây giờ vừa tập bắt đầu từ lơ karin bài chơi lại là ở elearning này cái hạt gram bị té để quay để dừng cái phòng thuê nó fly bắt chợ bón nhưng bằng hoa chỉ bị đổ ní ai có sản phẩm tha chui này tặng học nia bị cả đọc bỏ bua hay có ai bung răng sạch đom đọc bỏ này tặng học nia có đôi chia thuê ở miền làm hạt brand được trên hai oxygen đa lỏ nông chiêm đọc bỏ này tặng học nia tỏ dương cũng chăm du chập đào hạt bán tặng học nia Wait, but that means what 
อบรมตามแบบอิเล็กทรอนิกส์นำปีบอลทำลายดอยกระทรวงอบรมอยู่จนนาเกลาในตัวเชียจำเรียนดมบงดมเรียนสระสำคัญมวยชูตะการยกสมัยดิจิทัลกรมหุ้นอิสคอมเชียร์เจ้าตาอินเทอร์เน็ตดาวตัวยังในตีอย่างสำคัญนกนงกาจุบรุ่นนังพลัดพดูวิสัยดิจิทัลดังมูนในเยี่ยรูนนังวิสัยอบรมอนิเยไดไลน์สำหรับวิสัยอบรมวิบัติโควิดดับบุญปานมงหาในเกินจุบักาการอบรมตามประกอบในเล็กตัวเล็กมีอันสระสำคัญนังจำใบผมพอดนกนงกาบรรโตในรอนเพียบนงวิสัยอบรมปั้นแต่ดับใบเตนีประสิทธิเพียบนงประสิทธิพอลในการบังเรียนนงการเรียนเตรียมเตี้ยอัยเมียนการอาบิวอตนงสามเดือนอบเตยวิธีสักบังเรียนไม่ทำไมนังการปราบปราบอบกอจุ่มนุ่ยตามแบบดิจิทัลฟังได้ครั้งนี้นี่อีซิคอมเมียนเกติจุ่มโจรูมเฟอร์เจเนอปทอมทุ่มนงกามิธีกรูบังเรียนชนาวแต่เมียนเพียบชนาวแต่เด็กผมพอดทำไปเชื่อการเลือกตั้งเช็ดดาวลูกครูในครูหอยโจรูมอักบิวอตนงสามเดือนอบเตยบังเรียนวิธีสักบังเรียนไม่ทำไมดับใบเอาดำนาการอบรมตามประกอบอิเล็กทรอนิกส์นี้หายเพื่อตะบานดอยรู้นั่งประกอบดอยประสิทธิ์สมองคุณ Hi, I'm Nadine from East West International School and have been with the school for over four years and it's been a pleasure to watch education develop in Cambodia in this short time. On behalf of East West International School, we are proud sponsors of the Cambodian e-learning forum, with the aim of supporting development and innovation of education in Cambodia. In the midst of a pandemic, we have been forced collectively to not only rethink education, but call on innovative teaching practices to equip our children with real-world tools, as well as develop them into global citizens. At East West. Learning and teaching begins with our strong relationship. Care teaching and innovative learners use these real-world tools within the classroom. We look forward to see like-minded, forward-thinking organizations at this prestigious event. Thank you. ហើយទស្សនវិស័យគឺជាមួយបំពេញទទួលបានអាកាសអភិវឌ្ឍខ្លួនតាមរយៈឱកាសការងារក៏ដូចជាបាតភាពបន្តការ All right, everybody. Welcome back. We start. 
I hope you had a great coffee break and that you had a chance to check out all of our exhibitors and connect with other people as well. So our next speaker is David from Excel Consul Consulting, and he will be presenting on remote learning tricks with modern PowerPoint. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the way to get about young women. PowerPoint's been around forever, but unfortunately, that means that most of us are still using the features that have been around for 25 years and not looking at the cool, funky new features. So I'm going to walk you through those. My name is David Benheim, and I have a YouTube channel, um, and I also write blogs and do a lot of webinars about remote working technology, PowerPoint, Excel, etc. I'm going to exit out of slideshow mode, and then I'm going to go to a new slide. And I'm going to insert a screen recording. And this allows you to actually record your screen. So I can select the area to record part of it, like this. Go on record. Press record, and it will look at the different things. There's my countdown. It will record my audio, my voice, and what I'm doing with my mouse. When I'm done, I can hover here, press pause, or also use a shortcut, Windows Shift Q, as it's prompting me to do. Once you've done it, Point it in a slide like this. And you can keep it in your PowerPoint, or more likely, you'd want to right click and save media as. Then it saves as an MP4 file wherever you like. I used to use this all the time when I started making my videos before I moved into Camtasia, which is a more advanced software. When participants are online, it's more important than ever to do an agenda that you can refer to partway through the presentation. And that's why I love this summary Zoom feature. So the way it works is that you have just a regular slide, but with these objects. And if you want to jump straight to section one, you can click on that, and then it goes straight like that. But equally, you can jump straight to section three, auto plays a GIF video like that, or section five, or absolutely in any order that you want. So how do we do that? So here I am in a presentation with some slides. Um, what you do is the header of every section, it's good to have it sort of like this. So something with a distinct style. So this is number one, this is number two, et cetera, et cetera. And then you click just before your first section, go to insert, zoom, and summary zoom. Then you just click to select every single slide that is there. I find this works better with it lays, I'll do a seventh one and show you what can go wrong. Yeah, so there you go. Seven doesn't look great, whereas you can click on this and delete it. The other thing that you can see is if it's not consistently done like that, it doesn't look that good. Delete that and six looks really good. This is of course a regular, you can do absolutely anything you want. You can add icons or images or shapes or move things around. And then if you go to slideshow mode, Shift F5, you get that effectively working. You can click on there, run through the slides, and then when you're done, it could, takes you back here. Uh, it's great to go directly to the finish line, for example. And what Summary Zoom does is it allows you to go from just one, then two, then three, then four, to something that is non-linear. You can go from one to two or to three or to four. Do you see that was using the more feature that I absolutely love? Really good for assessing the strategy if you're running out of time or a table of contents as well like I've shown you here. Dans cette présentation, on peut parler en français et après ça va traduire ce qu'on dit dans une autre langue. Et si on ne sait pas exactement ce que ça va faire, ça va traduire mot par mot et après rechanger ce qui est C'est passé plus tôt. Alors, tu peux aller. That is an awesome new feature that you can do inside PowerPoint. So if you go to the slideshow tab, 
you click on always use subtitles, you have subtitles setting which language does it translate to. Now, it has about 16 languages, and the subtitle languages has over 60. Unfortunately, at this time, Khmer is not in either of them. So you can use a lot of languages here, including Vietnamese and Thai, but Khmer has not yet been featured. You also have other options for how you can choose where it is. But this subtitle setting is nowhere near as good as the next one. That is way more inclusive. Given that we're looking at modern PowerPoint, we are using the most modern features. If you go to file, version you have, I have 365 in the title, which means I am getting monthly updates. If you have 2016, 2019, et cetera here, that means that the new features stopped as soon as you bought the licenses rather than this where you get them updated all the time. And for the next feature, we're going to go to PowerPoint Online, which you can access through an Office 365 account if you have it by clicking here. So from PowerPoint Online, you can go to the Slideshow Mode tab, and you have choose if this is only people in your organization, which is the default, or anyone. I'm going to choose anyone. Then click Present Live, and it goes full screen, and this happens. So you have a link that you can copy, or you have a QR code that people can scan. So here we are where people have joined the session, and I go to show slides as the presenter, and it has me go through my slides as normal. I just have these extra options where I can get the link again, see how many people have joined, go to the welcome screen. The other stuff is pretty much the same. So this is the person following along. As you can see, they have the transcript, and it is transcribing it as I speak. And even if I speak really, really fast, it does a pretty good job at picking up what I'm saying. It does put the full stop in the wrong place, but that's not bad if you really think about all the effort that it's taking to do this. So the other cool thing is you can actually change the language. So if I want to speak this in French, I want to read it in French, I can change it as I need to, and it translates it live. And if you speak French like I do, you know that this is doing a pretty good job. It's not fantastically perfect, but it's pretty good job considering how fast I'm speaking. Also change it to any one of these languages. You can also uh, go to full screen mode or exit full screen. You can remove this if you don't want to. You can give, you can give these sort of reactions. And the viewer can actually progress the slides backwards or forwards. They can't go further in time, but they can go forwards and click current slide when they're done. From a mobile, you get a similar perspective. It is just in a different sort of screen, but all the same functionalities are different. And then you can, finally, you can give feedback by rating this presentation in different ways, and the presenter will get an email with comments and with all of these things. Back to the presenter's perspective. So this is how it looks. They can advance the slides, but they do also people when they react like that and if you end it you can also end it this way and then from the viewers perspective this is how it looks when it ends and finally this is the kind of email that you get when people give you feedback on it so your presentation score um, let's dig into the details so all the other questions they ask the top slides how many reactions there were per slide and what to improve on, and add slide ideas and speaker skills here, comments that you get as well. You also have a link to the Microsoft Forms through it, and all of those responses over here as well. Something that I find really useful when you are sharing is the ability to zoom in and out like this. To do that, you just use the keyboard shortcut, Windows key, and the plus button. Windows key and minus will zoom out. What that actually does is it opens up a program called Magnifier, uh, and you can do it manually like this without the shortcuts, but I think the shortcuts are just great. There are other views as well, um, but I tend to get into those by accident. Just go to full screen, and that is the best experience, and then minimize that to zoom in and out. Works on any application, including PowerPoint slides. Sometimes remote participants want to be able to 
tune in and out and do some other stuff on the side during presentations. So if you are going to share something that is going to be done without narrations, then I love using Sway. And the person viewing it can just scroll down. You can see it's animated. They can see before, after shot with pictures, interactive. Something uh, that I find really useful when you are sharing a screen or is the ability to zoom in and file out, an Excel like file this. that's embedded to here. To do that, you just uh, use just the like you would expect with the regular apps. Windows key. You get these the sort of picture button. effects where you Windows scroll key down minus and see the background, or well, that this actually does stays it. Opens up the a program stuff moves, and you can click videos to play them, and you can do it manually. You can edit it by clicking on here, and then you have these. Two tabs. Storyline. There are other views as well. Storyline is where you can add and move. Into those and then group just go it to, to create special effects. Is Design is where you can change the style. So it becomes super out. easy to switch around different PowerPoint styles. Device. In this case, the logo to devise your color palette, which is pretty cool. Then you're able to start a new document by choosing Sway. What I tend to do is start with a document and then just upload it. And then it sort of makes it into a Sway like you would make a Word document into a PDF. It's still good to do some manipulations and editing to make it more visual and to make it stand out, but effectively, that is mostly how you do it. You can share it then quite easily from clicking here. Look how it's already kind of animated and got certain effects like that. Great. So that was our presentation from David, and he will now be joining us for a live Q&A session. Do drop any queries that you have into the chat, and he can answer all of them immediately for you now. And he's here with us now. Welcome, David. Hi. Hi. Well, hi. Thanks for inviting me. Nice to be here. Thank you for joining us. We're so happy. So oh, um, while we're waiting for the questions to roll in, do you have any other um, any other comments that you'd like to make on top of your already very extensive video? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me um, so let me share a link to a Sway file that I made recently. I really love this application. Um, I think it's it's free, and this really solves the issue of people thinking. Well, um, a presentation is the same when it's narrated or when it's uh, something to be read. So a reading document for me is not something you should use PowerPoint for. So I love Sway. And Sway allows you to do what I said, which is scroll and see things as they come along. Uh, it's also like so easy to use. You can go from a Word document to Sway in about like um, five minutes. And it looks really, really good. And it's mobile optimized. So that is, a, that is a feature that I really, really love. And this is available online for free, yes? Yes, yes, yes. If you, I wonder if you have a free Microsoft account with a, a OneDrive or um, Outlook.com, you can get it. It's part, of the, it's part of the standard offerings that Microsoft have there, yeah. Right. Um, and uh, for those that aren't as um, proficient in all the shortcuts, do you have any tips and tricks on how to remember all the shortcut mm -hmm. cell or PowerPoint? Um, so I, I don't think we need to remember all of them. There's actually over 200 Excel shortcuts. Um, but it's just about figuring out which are the ones that are the, the, the commands they use the most frequently and memorize those. So for example, to go to next sheet in Excel, that is one that people probably use all the time. That is control uh, page down right in the chat. So that is one that I recommend using because a lot of people use that all the time. Um, yeah, and there's loads of very nifty ones for Excel and PowerPoint, but again, don't learn the ones like insert a, insert a chart that is something that people don't use. 10 times an hour, but use the ones that you need to scroll between pages because those are the really useful ones. Also, I have a YouTube channel um, with a lot of the tips, including one of the presentations. Some of the stuff that I showed you, a lot of it is there. So I'm going to put a link to that here. I've got about 2,000 subscribers. I started about a year ago, but I'm always looking to uh, showcase and, and I upload new videos every week about um, technology tips and tricks as well. 
um, audience, please go check out. He has dropped the link into the chat. We will make this link available to everyone as well, making sure that you can go and subscribe to his channel and check out all the tutorials that he has on Microsoft. So do check that out. Um, does the audience have any more questions that they'd like to direct at David? That hello. Hello. Is yeah, I'm here. here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, no. And programs there for teachers, and how effective they would also be for students to also make these presentations for their assignments. Is it also student friendly? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's, it's it's very student friendly. In fact, the uh, the the newer tools are um, are very popular amongst the students, including Sway. Sway is one that um, in education. Students really love doing it because it's very creative, it's very fun and quirky, and pretty easy to use. Um, so that that's really popular. And yeah, I, I think the newer tools, like some of the design ideas um, that are automated from PowerPoint, are just so much easier to use than anything else. So it's great for students, and you don't have to be creative anymore because the AI figures a lot of that out for you. Thank you. Um, would you mind also dropping your contacts into the chat so that people can easily reach you if they have any more questions? Yep, sure. Thank you. No we have reached the end of our session, but we loved having you, and definitely I will go check out your tutorials because. Okay, so. Um, if you have any more questions for David, or if you'd like to know more, then please contact him via the email that he is dropping right now. And there. Thank you so much, David, for joining us today. All right, no worries. Thank you, everyone, for organizing this great event. <laughs> Thank you, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. អរគុណច្រើនដល់លោកដេវីតមកពីអេក្ស៊ែលកុនសល់ទីងដែលបានអឺធ្វើបាត់បង្ហាញរបស់លោកតែ <cười> 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 បើសិនជាទស្សនិកជនមានសំណួរឬក៏មានចម្ងល់បន្ថែមតាក់ទងជាមួយនឹងប្រធានបត្តិរបស់លោកអឺទស្សនិកជនអាចធ្វើការសា
and through particularly the proliferation or the spread of critical thinking. And we do that through STEAM. So that's STEM with the arts because we design and design is incredibly important when you're talking about uh, problem solving, right? And so we, we need more innovators and we need to make sure that our teachers and educational institutions are prepared and enabled to help our students uh, get to a, a stage where they have the ability to do that. And at the moment, we, we're not quite there. What this is, is bring together the national community of everybody who has interesting experience and insights and advice together all in one place so that we can regroup and move forward together, right? So this is the intention. This is why we're investing in CEF 2020. And I hope that it's helpful to you. And I hope to see you there. Thank you. Yay! So say the Akhani, Kim Shmo Sere, Rod Mopi, Fly Phnom Ping, Hi Fly Phnom Ping. But she is a light at Tom Jim Gamma Pot. Uh, my son of the Kong Kumay, but that's a wrap of group waiting off. Okay, Jung, a topic about Yung Nat Tiny, Ku Tet Tong Chimoy and Ka, Saksa, Tamra Pon, Electronic E Learning. Okay, Jung, a Samap Yung Nat Tai E Learning, Yu Mins at some time, Hire Chia Wan, a Yoko, the Min Yuna, Hire Kim Smart Dial, and Yu Chapa Nam, that Tong, a Min Ka, that Tong Chimoy, and Kasaka Chipa Pon, a little neck, do you online same thing? The Saturday, with some can, the Sada, Patch Bum, Yung Min Chimu, the Matches of Call, let who are. អរការតែសារៀនក៏ដូចជាកូនក្មេងមានការលំបាកក្នុងការធ្វើដំណើរជាមួយក៏អាចមានផលវិបាកអីផ្សេងផ្សេងដែលតងជាមួយនឹងការ